Good morning, this is Ms. Raja from Emirates American School. We are in senior English class. Our objective is by the end of this lesson, you will be able to discuss, analyze, and note the main points of the sonnet. We are about to study, which is titled as The World is Too Much with us, written by uh, the great English romantic poet William Wordsworth. Before starting the lesson of today, let's make a short revision. In the previous lesson, we have talked about the main characteristics of Romanticism as an intellectual movement and how Wordsworth, the leader of the movement, uses the romantic elements in his poem. The word, the word is too much with us. To help create the notion of awakening and regain the real feeling of the joy of life. Then we move to talk about Wordsworth, Wordsworth's sonnet structure that it looks like the Shakespearean sonnets, but it is uh, different. Uh, it is different in terms of the topic, since it doesn't talk about romantic love. It talks about the intuition of kindness and compassion. It reminds the reader to focus on what really matters, not on what uh, what is artificial. Moreover. We have seen how Wordsworth rhyme his poem differently from Shakespeare's and how the different quatrains shift from one idea to the other smoothly. Not like Shakespearean sonnets that usually sets the problem or the question, then describe it, then give a turning point and in the end, uh, or in the couplets, it provides us with what it provides us with the, uh, the solution. So please try not to mix up between the two sonnet structures, because they are different in, in terms of characteristics, uh, uh, characteristic, structure, topic, and rhyme scheme. So the word is too much with us. Open your books on page 628. It is good to start our lesson by asking this question. How does Wordsworth see the word? Look at the title. The word is too much with us. Think about it a little bit. Think about which word Wordsworth is talking about. Is it the artificial word or the spiritual word? And why does he say it is too much with us? Does he mean the human beings are losing themselves in this new area, the area of the Industrial Revolution? Or he means that the world of materials, of artificial stuff, is too much, whereas the world of nature is not. Let's connect this idea to nowadays and think. What is wrong with our world? So this question will be discussed during the streamline the class. Just think about it. What is wrong with our world? Using the notions of words worth, we're going to discuss these points. Now let's look at the poem, note the main points, and try to discuss and analyze the meaning of each line. Let's start by the first quatrain. The word is too much with us. Late and soon. Getting and spending. Oh, look here. Getting and spending. This is the mall. He is referring to the mall. He is talking about the mall. Do you know those places where the people go to shop and buy things? Getting and spending? We lay waste on our powers. We tend to waste our intuitions, our moral, spiritual side. For him, these are our powers. For him, the human powers plays in our intuitions and in our knowledge and in our compassion. Little 
with we see little we see in nature that is ours i want you to look at the word nature look at the word nature can you see it yes you're right it is capitalized i have a question do we capitalize a word in the middle of the sentence think about why does he so you're right yes you're right he wants to show the importance of nature in human life and how we become less interested in nature although it bears and protects our powers our intuition of knowledge compassion kindness and life in general we have given our hearts away a sordid boon it means we are so interested in the more we are so interested in getting and spending we are so interested in stuff we are giving our hearts away which is a sordid boon which is an immoral favor Please take this note. Wordsworth claims that we have lost our focus. We've lost our ability to care about what really matters. What really matters, according to him, is the word of nature. He is talking about the artificial word that is starting to matter, the rise of the industrial revolution. It is a profound romantic point that Wordsworth mentions by claiming that there is something fundamentally wrong when money starts to matter too much. To the extent that people begin to lose touch with what really matters, begin to lose touch with the joy, the real joy of life. In the second quatrain, Wordsworth shifts to talk about nature, the ocean, the sea specifically. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon. In other words, the sea is deadly still. It is very calm to the extent you, f you may feel as if you were walking on it. And this is the positive side of nature. The winds that will be howling at all hours and are upgraded now like sleeping flowers. The speaker looks at the still sea and he knows that the winds are right now held in check, but they are coming. It's just a matter of time which shows us the negative power of the nature. The ocean can suddenly be angry. Wordsworth is emphasizing the two forces of nature, both positive and negative, both soft as well as hard. Another important note for the third line in this quatrain that I want you to mark is the use of figurative language. Look at this, like, like sleeping hours, like sleeping flowers. Think about which figurative language element is used here. And what is like sleeping flowers? Use the uh, information we have studied before about figurative language because this element we've seen it before. Try to uh, to find out which element is used here and try to find out sleeping flowers are like what. We will be discussing this point in the coming lesson of language that has to do with figurative language. In line 8, for this, for everything, we are out of tune. He uses an interesting word picture when he refers to the musicians. Can you imagine a guitar out of tune? How would it sound? Just imagine this. 
Wordsworth claims that people have the tendency to forget, to forget what really matters. That's why they are out of tune. They lack the real joy of life. Here he is linking the, the life of adults to life of children, because children are enjoying life more than adults do. Why? Because they look at things that are matters, that matters more than what uh, the adults think. Children still, still enjoy uh, the football game, for example. A football game for kids is an entertainment. But for adults, it is a competition. It becomes like a stress. So adults forget about the joy of life. They forget about what fully matters. The speaker finishes his poem with a religious observation. He states that there is a difference between being, re being religious and having some sense of the spiritual, some sense of the real. Take a look at how he says it. He goes back in time to the Greeks. What is significant about the way the Greeks saw the world? They saw nature fully inhabited. Are you ready for this? Please listen. The Greeks named God's personalities to every one of the elements of nature. For them, nature is somehow connected with the forces of our human life. Take a look on how Wordsworth says it. Line 9 and 10. It moves us on. Great God! Exclamation mark. To show what? To show high feelings. I'd rather be a pagan. I'd rather be a Greek, sculled in a creed out war. He says, I want to be a Greek person. In other words, a non-Christian. I wish I had been raised, suckled, a Greek religious school. I had been taught Greek religious beliefs. He'd like to go back to pre-Christian Greece. So uh, might I, standing on this pleasant lee, this pleasant meadow, this pleasant beach, have glimpses that would make less forlorn, have sight of Proteus rising from the sea. Our hair, all threatened, blow his wreathed horn. So here he is referring to two gods, a god that could, who could change his appearance and will, and a god with the head and upper body of a man and tail of a fish. In other words, he says, I wish I could go back to a time when all of nature was taught to me from my youth that nature had life of its own, it had a support of its own. So this is our, our poem, the whole poem. Okay, I'd like you to read it again and, and, uh, and enjoy reading it while understanding it well. But at the same time, think about this question. Do you agree or disagree that malls, that ability to shop online, that technology of any number of kinds, have somehow made our guitar out of tune and we don't really understand what fully matters? Would you agree with an idea like that? This is a very romantic intuition. Please think about it and we're going to discuss this point in our streamlined classes next uh, week inshallah take care of yourselves have a wonderful uh, day and wishing you enjoyed the lesson of today thank you